Welcome to my Chuck's Big Adventure trip in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Behind me, one of America's most unique bridges, the Young's High Bridge built over the Kentucky River in 1889. But this is just a small part of the history, the music, and the majesty of Kentucky. Look closely. Along Kentucky's rolling hills, you will see and hear some of the finest bred horses in the world. I'm gonna love them is what you're saying? Yes. You pick up on the vibe, the gait, rhythm, and wonder of these majestic animals. So there's a, just a special connection that exists between the people and horses. Horses have been a part of Kentucky's identity and economy for generations. In fact, the first horse race in Lexington was in 1787. Today, the Kentucky Horse Park makes the experience accessible to everyone. I mean, we recognize that for our, you know, some of our million plus guests that come through our gates, that, that we're their first experience with the equine community. So what we try to do is create a special experience for them that might develop into a lifelong love of the horse. So this is Jace, he's one of our Belgians here. Uh, he's about 14 years old. He's the largest horse at the horse park, so he weighs over 2,400 pounds. Uh, That's a small car. Yes. <laughs> Jace, uh, he's got quite a big personality. Um, he likes to think that he's a big tough guy, um, but really he's a big softie at heart. I don't think there's any other place on earth where you can see so many different breeds of horses from across the country and around the world. Not just that, but the ability to touch them and engage with them. Horses like two-time Breeders' Cup sprint winner, Roy H. Well, he has quite a history. Yes. <laughs> and he is one of the stars of the Kentucky Horse Park right Absolutely. now, isn't he? Yes, he is, yes. Everybody loves him. He loves greeting people, and he's just very friendly and outgoing. The park focuses on both tourism and competition. You know, coming and competing at the Kentucky Horse Park is like going and playing at Boston Garden yeah. or Yankee Stadium. You know, it is that historic place. And so there's an aura when folks come in here to compete that is just uh, magical. More than 40,000 Kentuckians work in the horse industry, and several of them are right here at the Kentucky Horse Park. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, you're my kind of guy. When you're hungry, you're hungry. I get it. Each employee has passion and love for the horses, and they want to inspire you. I love getting to educate the public about them and, you know, getting to see people walk away uh, with a, a new interest in horses. Horses definitely can sense how you're feeling. Um, if you're feeling down, they do a good job of picking you up. The Kentucky Horse Park, a celebration of the love, appreciation, and legacy of the horse. In the heart of the bluegrass, it's a retirement fit for royalty. And here, some of the residents are just that. Hey, lava man. Silver charm. <laughs> yeah. For the most part, pretty unpretentious given the fact that they're all a bunch of millionaires. Names like I'll Have Another, Silver Charm. You blazed when you ran. And Touch Gold, all winners of major races like the Kentucky Derby and Preakness. It's unbelievable. It's like having Larry Bird and Magic Johnson in your yard. It's just sensational. I'm thrilled. I mean, I'm starstruck by these horses. Every day I'm starstruck. Former Boston Globe movie critic Michael Blowen started Old Friends in 2003. At the end of the day, these horses were in jeopardy. And so I thought, well, you know what? I, I, I started to do what everybody tells you not to do, which is fall in love with the horses. And I'm glad I did. And, uh, and that was the beginning of it. And everybody knows he's my favorite. I decided to try this as a tourist operation because I knew from my days of covering the movies what people were like about movie stars, and I was like that around these horses. Just enjoying the afternoon with a millionaire, an all-time champ, eating some crumbs. And I saw how people were around him. I knew that if you took that idea and placed it someplace else, there's a really good chance that things would happen. Today, hundreds of horses from all walks of life spend their days being waited on head to hoof. Your buddy's going to get all the treats, but at this stage, yeah, it's whatever they want to do. And that's, you know, that's part of the whole philosophy. Being trained, they have done what they've been told since they were babies. But once they get here, we do what they say. So our job is to really spoil them, because they've earned it. What a wonderful way to grow old. I'm in for that, John. We should all be so lucky. <laughs> oh, you're not kidding. Old Friends also honors the legacy of horses that have since passed on. When I walk around that cemetery, aside from 
feeling a little bit sad. The amazing thing is that each one of these uh, horses, whether they ended up winning the Derby or the Preakness or the Breeders' Cup or the Dubai World Cup, um, or whether they didn't win anything, they all have great stories. They're people horses, and I think they somehow, Chuck, recognize their role as ambassadors, mm -hmm. that, that they're representing all their fellow athletes. For 95 years, Bernheim Forest has served as a gathering place for all. Isaac Wolf Bernheim believed that nature was for everybody, that nature was restorative. In 1929, when he set this up, he said, I want this to be accessible to all people, regardless of race, creed, or economic status. I mean, that's a visionary. 16,000 acres and a million things to do. Every day is different in nature. Something's blooming, there's new butterflies or moths to see, there's new birds to find, there's new hiking trails. There's always something regardless of seasons. We also say there's no bad weather, just bad clothing. So, you know, <laughs> come prepared. And I'm you're gonna, gonna use that line. <laughs> One can't miss installation, the incredible forest giants. Meet Mama Lumari. She's made out of recycled wood, and so this is shipping pallets. And then the dress is actually bourbon barrel staves. And so those are from old bourbon barrels. And then the face is made out of everything from uh, kitchen cabinets to whatever playing nearby her daughter Elena. When the artist built this, he put a little bracelet around her wrist right over here, and it had three quartz crystals tied into it. Well, those lasted about two weeks, and somebody <laughs> stole them. Oh, no. Ever since then, people have been bringing her homage. So, Chuck, one of the joys of this uh, sculpture is it makes noise. Try it. Yeah. Like a wind chime. In the heart of central Kentucky, an environmental wonder and a place where art, science, and nature connect. So this stainless steel ring represents the Earth if 200 miles were compressed into one inch. Wow. And so that's the diameter of the Earth. And then if you looked at the thickness of this stainless steel ring, that's the thickness of the atmosphere on the Earth. Ooh. And so that's the little wow. bit of air that we take for granted. At that scale, the entire water on Earth, oceans, glaciers, rivers, streams, lakes, equates this little pond right here. Bernheim Forest is all about discovery, appreciation of art and nature, and most of all, peace. Enjoy the ride. Thank you. It's all aboard for a scenic rail journey. Full speed ahead. You get to see a side of Kentucky that you wouldn't normally get to see from a totally different perspective, one foot off the rails. But these aren't your average train cars. In fact, they aren't cars at all. This is a rail explorer. We're getting a heck of a workout here. It's very easy. All you're doing is getting a cardio in by moving your legs, but it's not difficult at all. That Rex propulsion system kicks in. Right now, we're able to do a lot of coasting. The unique bikes give a new life to an old rail line and offer up a magnificent one-of-a-kind ride. Do you guys enjoy the ride? Yes. We've pedaled, and now here's the payoff. And this is the view that you see at the end when you get to the turnaround. This is my office. Well, right now, you're seeing Young Tai Bridge, built in 1889, one of the longest and tallest and oldest in the country. You're also seeing the S Bridge that Kentucky's famous for, one of the longest S bridges out there. And then if you look across the way, you'll see wild turkey out there. That is the wild turkey distillery. Those are the famous limestone cliff sides that you see that their water is filtered through that allows that beautiful flavor for that bourbon. Guests get to spend about 30 minutes at the lookout while the crew turns the bikes for the return trip. And you could smell some fragrant flowers. You could, that's the honeysuckle you pass by going down through. A once-in-a-lifetime way to experience the beauty of the bluegrass. 
We offer experience for anyone from zero to 100 in all capabilities to get out there and ride. We want anyone and everyone to get out there and enjoy this experience with us. Beneath the mountains of Kentucky's Red River Gorge, this mine first opened in the 1860s. Now, it looked a lot different than what it does today. Sits a mine long ago abandoned. Uh, the first map we found of this place had the mine as a 10 by 10 tunnel. In 1985, they ended up going bankrupt and had to leave. Today, the 15 acres of mine space offers a cool experience. Let's go. We are in the gorge underground here in uh, Rogers, Kentucky, and we're about to go on a kayaking tour. And you can actually look over here to our right, and you can actually see some of that old equipment that was left behind. Crystal kayaks with LED lights illuminate the rocky passages. Uh, I'm sure you guys are probably familiar with the Loch Ness Monster, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we actually have our very own here in uh, the gorge underground. We like to call it our 13th cousin. Yeah, right here, we're, we should start to notice some rainbow trout. Oh, here comes one. Yeah, there's a pretty big one right Whoa, there. Whoa, he's a big one. This is one of the treats, seeing these very good sized fish here. Yeah, so that's one definitely one of the coolest parts of our tour. So here we are, Jacob. This is as deep as it gets here, right? We're about 35 feet um, above this water right now. You can tell that ceiling's getting a lot closer to us. We can almost reach up there and touch it. So this is actually the geological center of the mine. Uh, we're actually about 250 feet underground right here in this area, yes. Wow. So this is actually right underneath the peak of the mountain that's above us. From deep under the gorge to sleeping among the trees. I think it's a little bit of an um, adventure for any adult, much less a kid, yeah. just because you're staying in a place that you would never have seen anything like it before. Franny, your company saying is, cribs in the twigs, right? And that's exactly what it is. I think it's an adorable saying. Um, and yeah, there are these awesome structures that tucked away in parts of the forest that you would never think to stay overnight. These stunning cabins, the creation of the Canopy Crew at Red River Gorgeous. I like the creativity side of it. Coming to a spot that's just a, a blank face of rock and saying we could have a deck here, we could have the building here, that, that to me is a really fun. The idea is to unplug who connect with nature and each other. For some of the cabins, getting there is half the adventure. My recommendation for, for any guests that would that would want to come and stay is uh, spend a couple couple months on the Treadmaster. We definitely let folks know to pack everything in a backpack because it's so much easier to carry up. And you do have electricity. Yes, they have electricity. They have heating and cooling. Oh there man! There are showers and bathrooms. Wow. You know, you are you're staying in a nice hotel, but it's way cooler. And welcome everybody to the beautiful and historic Lyric Theater. Here. It's a Monday night at the Lyric Theater in Lexington, Kentucky. Let's welcome folk singer Michael Jonathan. Where one of the most listened to radio shows in the world is being recorded. You could read my mind, what a tale my thoughts would tell. The Woodsong's old time like radio old hour is the brainchild of folk singer Michael Jonathan. The show is broadcast on 500 radio stations, mostly public radio, around North America. Its reach, though, is worldwide. And Wood Songs is sort of the comfortable musical rocking chair on America's front porch. It's folk and blues and bluegrass country. We've had everything from poetry to classical, uh, acoustic rap, bluegrass rap, you know, <laughs> you know, novelists. It's a wonderful musical rainbow of many colors and we celebrate it all. She is uh, playing a 20-string uh, harp guitar. The show this Monday features two of the world's great guitar players, Muriel Anderson. Hey, just... And Japanese artist, Hiroya Sumoto. Hey, just... Famous artists like Jewel, Odetta, and Bela Fleck have all performed on Wood Songs, so too have artists you've never heard of, yet. 
I say it on the, on the air every week. You don't have to be famous, you just have to be good. The show is one part Grand Ole Opry, one part Prairie Home Companion, and all pure Americana. Why is Wood Songs able to have such a worldwide reach? Everyone here is a volunteer. No one gets paid for working on this tightly run broadcast ship. We have the most incredible, amazing, all volunteer run crew that puts Wood Songs together from start to finish. Smoke out the window flying. The Wood Songs kids portion of the show has grown into its own production featuring the next generation of talent. Hi, I'm Savannah Love Cool. I decided to pick up the guitar and it's now one of my favorite instruments to play. The belief here that music brings us all together. And nobody can fight during the act of listening. It's physically impossible. That's the beauty of art. That's the power of art. That's the power of music. That's the power of what you can do with your instrument, just like with what, what they do. My name is Michael Jonathan. I'm a folk singer. I am a song farmer, and we'll see you next week on the Woods Song. Old Time Radio. Good night. This is bluegrass country over here in Kentucky, especially in Owensboro. You know, it is the bluegrass music capital of the world, and they embrace all things bluegrass music. In a place where bluegrass is king, the people would come from far to away to dance all night till the break of day. Bill Monroe, the father of bluegrass music, is from this region. This rural Kentucky home. He was trying to create energy with his music. The birthplace of a genre that transcends time and distance. I love it if someone from the Netherlands may show up here and they speak Dutch and I speak English, but we know a lot of the same songs, so we're communicating, we're connecting. And I think that's what bluegrass music does, is it helps connect people and it builds community. <laughs> when Russia came down with the Iron Curtain during the Cold War, bluegrass music was allowed to get in when no other American music was. Today, the Bluegrass Hall of Fame and Museum celebrates the sounds of the past. Bill Monroe music yes. and Platt Scruggs and the Stanley Brothers. And Jerry Garcia. I didn't know. Who would have thought? While looking to the future. So bluegrass music is clearly in the hands of a new generation. And their creativity and their capability is just off the charts. I saw the light. I saw the light. The joy of bluegrass brought to life daily inside the picking parlor. Now I'm so happy, It's a sound that lifts the spirits. That whole genre is about hope and looking to the future. I think that's just another, another reason why bluegrass music is so compelling to a, to a wide audience. What we're trying to introduce folks to is that there is a, a connection, a human connection around bluegrass music. It's about the people and it's about the community of bluegrass music, whether you live right here in this community or whether your community is the other side of the country. No more darkness, no more night. Now From professional so to amateur, this room brings inside. out the musician and all who enter. I saw the light. Woo! Thank <laughs> you, Chris. That's awesome. <laughs> Beyond this storefront in historic downtown Owensboro. Hi, I'm Rick Ferris. I'm a bluegrass artist and a bluegrass luthier. A luthier is a maker or repairer of stringed instruments, and that's me. Are you living just to die, my friend? Rick Ferris has been making incredible custom guitars for more than two decades. When I realized that I was not going to be able to afford them, uh, I started looking into repairing the one I had or making it better, and then it turned into this quest for uh, building guitars that are just better than I could find anywhere. I love to find woods that just draw you in. Through every shaving, the meticulous sanding from a rugged box tone to a perfect musical tone. Not only does he create these amazing pieces of musical art, he plays them as well, all over the world with his band. Any old time you want to come back home. Well, drop me a line. So a blue
bluegrass guitar, what you're looking for is something that can be aggressive, it can be pretty, it can be sweet. So you need those soft pearly tones, but it also needs to have a sustain that's rich and full, or it needs to get after it. Rick's shop is a place where dreams become reality. <laughs> I can't believe that this is the shop I get to build guitars uh, and make people's dream guitars in. This is the neck block. The neck extends out this way. This is the tail block. Then I come in and remove the excess with hand tools every bit I can. I love using tone woods that just have a personality. That is a piece of quilted cherry. You see the little tiger? See his eyes? Grinning. He's hungry. This has been a dream come true to me because I've always wanted a shop. I've always wanted a storefront where folks can come in and get excited about bluegrass. You've had your chance to play the game fair. When you left me, sweetheart, you only left a love who cared. I've had many albums now that I, I've had featured out there and it's, I, I never get Never get tired of just like going, holy cow, I'm on the radio. <laughs> His biggest takeaway for those wanting to learn? Don't give up. That is the entire lesson. You can find something that you genuinely love and do it. It's the beginning of the never end. It's been a symbol of hope in Kentucky for generations. Berea College is giving students who otherwise would not have those opportunities to go to college, but not only that, they're learning skills that will last their lifetime. This can be a generation changer for families as well. Exactly. Like we have many students who break the cycle. So you're going to find about 50 to 60 percent of wow. an entering class will be first generation in their family. Berea was the South's first integrated co-educational college. By 1892, the trustees of the school decided no student should have to pay tuition. This was not a school for elites. This was a school for always for people kind of on the margins economically, white and black, men and women. Berea College is still in the forefront of the civil rights movement. Uh, and in, in the forefront of challenging discrimination uh, and breaking uh, the, the ceiling uh, that restricts people who want to have access to education. Today, students draw from a number of majors, from art that is complicated to computer science. And because of the college's no tuition promise and unique labor program, they leave ready for the workforce. We've had a lot of, number of recent graduates who become senior software engineers within a couple years after graduation because they've had a lot of experience already working on a software team, working on real projects. But you don't have to be a student to enjoy the beautiful campus. Checking in. Guests can experience the Berea legacy for themselves at the historic Boone Tavern, a quaint hotel where you'll often find students working. It goes back to the great commitments of Berea College, uh, chief among which is to foster a healthy respect for labor, both of the brain and of the muscle. So it kind of instills in them that uh, strong work ethic, and it gives them uh, certain skills they can then use to go into the job market afterwards. When you think of the skill sets that are developed, um, both soft and hard skills throughout their four years, their resumes are instantly strengthened to a level that really sets them apart um, from other college graduates that may be pursuing the, the profession that they are seeking afterwards. The school's endowment ensures students have a real chance at hope, hope for the future, and hope to end a cycle of poverty. Back in the pits. I like to call it a redneck crab cake. It is our bourbon barbecue mac and cheese. It's a journey sure to satisfy any palate. Taste the smoke. Brisket and burgoo. It's the burgoo in Western Kentucky, 100%. Beans and slaw, they have it all. The beans are the best beans uh, in the country, in my opinion. 40 plus restaurants in 18 cities make up the West Kentucky barbecue belt. We visited three different and delicious options. 
Over heavy dry rub, no sauce, multitude of sauces on the table. I'm Kevin Gibson. I own Thomason's Barbecue here in Henderson, Kentucky. We typically have a thinner vinegar-based sauce. Mm -hmm. We call a dip or a mop. So it's much thinner, and so when you get folks come from the north, they can't pick up their sandwich. You yeah. gotta eat it with a knife and fork, and so they get confused. The secret is cooking. It's taking your time to season things. You can't just open a can and heat it up. That's, that's not the secret to good food. Moonlight is one of America's best known barbecue restaurants. It's got the buffet. And it's special because you made it the way you wanted it and has all your favorites on it. Mutt, beef, lot should be thick. The funny thing on burgoo is that all the different cooks have different recipes and what they put in it. The burgoo and a lot of history Presidents, athletes, and the average Joe have made this place a barbecue lover's bucket list stuff. You can be next to the governor, you can be sitting next to a congressman, you can be sitting next to a millionaire doing a million dollar business deal, and then there could be a table of a couple farmers and a couple teenagers on the next table. I always tell people I used to skip school just to come and get some barbecue. What I've recognized coming home is the diversity of our customers and how this food, this West Kentucky barbecue, brings people together. Five pounds of beans. Thomason's Barbecue in Henderson is a no frills, generational family joint. So we have our pork, uh, which we sell most of. We have our mutton, which you can only get here in Western Kentucky. Then we have my favorite, which is chip, where we take the bark of the pork and mutton, we chop it up really fine, mix it together, and then soak it in our barbecue dip. We also have our barbecue baked beans, which we sell about 37,000 pounds a year of. We call it cowboy caviar. And we're just a little funky, no, maybe a little a weird. Here, a funky, that is awesome. If you're in the mood for a more Tex-Mex flavor, head to Homer's. So Homer Ward was my great grandfather. He had a barbecue place in Western Kentucky, in the late 60s, early 70s. It's probably a little bit different than what he used to do, but I think he'd be pretty proud of it. Casey Todd's place is half hip, half traditional, all good. We call these the pork cakes, and everybody's like, what in the world is a pork cake? It's like a crab cake, well, kind of, like, sort of. I like to call it a redneck crab cake. <laughs> it's exactly what it is. We're in Kentucky, you know, we, we are who we are, it is what it is. So when you visit Kentucky, don't miss the barbecue belt. The food is great, but it's the tradition, the community, and the memories you'll always cherish. Casey, cheers. To the funky wings. To the wings. funky wings. <laughs> That's right. Welcome to the houseboat capital of the world. It's one of the prettiest places in Kentucky. Every inch of it's just as pretty as what's outside the window there. Here at Lake Cumberland, boating isn't just a hobby, it's a way of life. <laughs> How's it going? Look how beautiful my view is, so relaxing. You can go out in the cove park or do about anything you want. I never dreamed I would be here and I wouldn't want to be any place else. These truly are houses on the water with all the conveniences of home. Hi, welcome to Kill and Willie. This is my living room. I have five TVs on this boat. Uh, I have a washer dryer. I have a nice big kitchen with a dishwasher and a stove. We are aboard Let's Rock. It's a 75 foot Jamestowner. We're in the master bedroom. It's uh, it's as comfortable as our bedroom at home. Lots of time on the water. We get out three or four times a week and swim and, and play. And <laughs> um, Nice little community on each of the piers. We all get together in the evening. It's a nice life. Yes, this is my neighbors. This is what we do. They take care it's of my It's a place babies. where dock mates so, become lifelong friends. We get together in the afternoons and have happy hour, and they just become like family. Friendship, enjoy have a good time. We just love the people and the marina. Swim at bar, Willie's bar. If you don't want to invest in a home away from home, the folks at Conley Bottom Marina have you covered. The boat that we are on right now is called our luxury liner. Um, it's our largest houseboat. It is 75 feet long and it sleeps 12 people. They all have water slides. They have jet ski ports. This boat has six bedrooms. It's two baths. Has a full living room, kitchen, um, pretty much everything that you need at home, we have on this boat. And of course, the captain's chair for whoever the driver is. What is so special about this place is the people here. We are a family owned and operated business. No boating experience? No problem. 
Whenever you arrive, we will have an instructor and they will go over everything with you before you ever leave the marina. Um, and it's really not too hard to drive. So whether you're here for a day or the whole summer, it's a sweet life on the lake. It's a house on the water and it doesn't get better than that. Come back and visit us anytime. The roar is familiar. The cars are unmistakable. For any Corvette fan, the NCM Motorsports Park is the ultimate driving destination. Built by Corvette experts for Corvettes, and there's no other place like it in the automotive world. Without a question, we have one of the best road courses in not only North America, but probably the whole world. 3.2 miles, 23 turns. We're gonna teach you to sit in a car a little bit differently than what you might expect. Okay. Bring your own car, or you can drive one of theirs. I got the once in a lifetime okay. chance to drive the new hybrid E-Ray. I have waited for this minute for 30 years. Woo! Let's go racing, this is great. <laughs> Woo! Boy, is this again. Well, this is a high performance vehicle and I can really feel it now. The only way to really know this car and learn to love this car is to drive it. Oh, we are getting fast now. The cool thing is it takes a fraction of a second to realize, holy moly, this is something really special. The power that you feel. Woo -wee! Oh my gosh, this is awesome. Wow. But I wasn't done yet. We're going to do launch mode. I hopped in the passenger seat for a hot lap with instructor and general manager Zach. Buckle up, you're going to want to hold on for this one. Win! <laughs> Woo! Oh. <laughs> All right, hot lap on track, track is on. So right now, the car is in, in full gasoline mode, full power mode, so it's giving me everything it's got. The idea here drive these vets like they were designed to be driven. And then it accelerates like a banshee. Lots Boy, it of sure brakes. Does. So we Whoa. can do things in this car that we can't do in any other car because of the, the technology and the design of it. Whoa. Right Whoa. here. Woo! And then back up the hill. It's almost as if you can feel G-forces here. Well, you can because we're pulling about 1.2 G's right oh, now. Oh, man. So now we're going to roll in and we're going to give her all she's got. Done Here we go. Out. Wow. There's going to be lots of brakes at the end of this, so get ready. Three, two, lots of brakes. Lots of brakes. Lots of brakes. Pitch her in. Woo! You're a heck of a driver, man. <laughs> it's a great place to fall in love with the great American sports car all over again. Zach, I thought at one point this was going to be Chuck's big adventure to the emergency room. This was Chuck's big adventure to absolute joy. This is one of the thrills of my life. Thank you so much. For 30 years, this space age facility off I-65 in Bowling Green has been the home of a celebration. Well, it's America's sports car, 71 years of innovation, performance, being ingrained in our pop culture. A celebration of the Corvette, America's sports car since 1953. From the first. First generation, first model, all white with the red interior, 300 of them built. This one here uh, on display in the museum. To the rarest of rare. So this is the one and only 1983 Corvette in existence. The National Corvette Museum is a full-blown festival of appreciation for this legendary car. When you put all that together with an incredible community of Corvette owners, um, it really is a car like none other. And really, uh, many Corvette owners say they're living the dream when they get their Corvette. So Ryan, February 12th, 2014, a day that changed this museum forever, right? Absolutely. So. Fortunately, we had a sinkhole that opened up underneath the world famous Sky Dome and it swallowed up eight uh, really incredible Corvettes. So in honor of that 10 year anniversary, uh, you are in ground to sky, the sinkhole reimagined. So this is a limited engagement uh, exhibit that we have that really tells the story of that moment. But then the 10 years since, because this is really a story of the Phoenix rising from the ashes. Yeah. You know, since that sinkhole, of course, we were able to rebuild so they know these cars. The future of the car is featured too, and it's just as bold and innovative as the past. 
how do you make it faster, handle better, lighter? Um, and that really is a lineage that we've had the whole time. And now with technology and electrification, you're starting to see that times two and times three. The gains are just out of this world. Right now for that C8, uh, the average age of the buyer is 10 years younger than the previous wow. generation. So it went from 65 to 55. It's also the number one selling luxury sports performance car, age 35 and under. So it, it's reaching a wide variety of, 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 of Was customers. Was that a shock to GM? I, you know, I mean, you always hope for that, but yes. I would say 10 years over that course yeah. of the generation is pretty significant. It is moms with their daughters, it is young families who are coming to take delivery of their new Corvette. So, a little different than what people think. The National Corvette Museum is a monument to America's past love affair with this car and a reason why it'll be forever loved by generations to come. If they dreamed about a Corvette, young or old, pull the trigger, make it happen.